I'd love to introduce the last um, uh, contributing speaker. And this is Matthias Hornschuh. And again, here's the old male, the, the old white male from the mafia. Because um, I'm a professional author, I'm a professional composer. I'm fighting for uh, copyright for authors' rights in Germany and in uh, Europe um, for years right now. Um, I'm a member of the board of a collective, uh, collecting society in Germany, um, um, which might be one reason we won't be able to, to find a solution between us, because uh, from coming from Greece or from Spain or from Italy, I, I do understand the problems with the collecting societies. But uh, that's a problem uh, that might be a little bit more on the cultural side of problems, mentality uh, driven. Yeah, uh, because um, um, just one thing um, before I start to go into all these aspects. In Germany, the GEMA, who's quite huge, um, is, is a trustee. They don't own the money. It's my money um, as a composer being a member of a collective. And this collective decides, uh, the members of the collective decide on the tariffs and um, on the distribu distribution of the money. And it's not the, the company's money. Uh, we're not empl um, employees. Um, it's, it's a bizarre um, uh, thing to think about because, um, I mean, we have heard five presentations and no one told you that we don't have copyright in Europe. We, don't an we, we have an author's right in Europe. It's a fundamental uh, uh, um, difference between the Anglo-American system where we, we, where we do have the idea of um, work made for hire. I, I, I can place a student into my, uh, into my studio, give him $100 per day, and everything he creates will be my own under Anglo-American copyright. This is impossible in Europe because we have an author's right and everything uh, the student might be creating will be his own in the moment and due to the act of creation. It can't be, it can't be taken away, even not through a, a contract. And uh, there's another thing I should add, because um, we have heard uh, things about rela related, um, related uh, rights. Uh, the rights of the performer or the rights of the one uh, who does the recording. It's not the same thing, because it's not, not an author's right, it's, it's a related right. And um, only the right of the, of the uh, one who does the recording, the master right, is, an, is, a, is a pure economic right. It's not based on artistic uh, values or creation. Um, but the right of the performer of the star, of the singer, of the dancer, of the of the uh, of the musicians on stage or in in, in the studio, um, are artistic rights like like an author's right. They are not identical to that, but um, um, they are handled like an author's right. Um, and so, um, uh, coming back to one example we heard, um, if one people does uh, one person does an, uh, a recording of people dancing or singing. That there need to be attached at least two rights to that. Um, if we don't have an author, which, which, which might be plausible, uh, we at least have um, uh, the rights of the dancers or the singers, and we can't take them away. Um, the third right might be that one of the one who did the recording, but it's, it's a small right, and it's not very, not very intense in terms of... Um, of making money out of it, um, ask ask the filmmakers; they they will tell you something about it. Because uh, the film producers own only this little rest, this this this, this little piece of right, uh, the, the right to the to the recording, and they can do anything about it. So, me being an author, um, I um, started. I, I should I should tell you something about me as a person. I um, I um, studied the violin, classical violin, um, came, coming from a background of, of classical music, um, high culture, old culture, things like that, and I uh, inhaled everything um, um, belonging to that, and I loved it. But I decided not to 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 stay within it and um, let my hair grow, um, uh, and became became a professional heavy metal guitarist um, years ago, decades ago, and. Um, it turned out to be po possible, but uh, I couldn't become happy with b playing in a band of another author. Uh, bad music, I didn't like. I will, it was quite a good band, but, but uh, um, uh, the artistic value wasn't there. And so I left and studied musicology. 
systematic musicology and um, um, ended up writing uh, a, hu a huge thesis uh, in music psychology. And um, around the same, the same moment, I, I was asked to do um, a composition for a theater play, for, for a drama. And it turned out to be uh, uh, the one point in my life that changed everything because all of a sudden I knew where I belonged. Um, um, working with an orchestra, working with guitars, working with electronics, uh, working with text, with the drama itself, um, inter doing interpretation, um, um, diving deep into the drama uh, and um, finding an interpretation of my own and finding uh, um, uh, a way to become a small but essential part of a holistic approach, of a, of a holistic artistic approach. What was what that, that was exactly what I was looking for at that time. So um, I did some jobs in the music industry, but not being an artist. Um, and um, uh, all of a sudden, there was one big job that made me a professional because they paid quite a lot of money, and so I dropped every job and turned out to be a, pro a professional composer and music producer. And with my background from, from classical um, culture, I didn't have any clue what they were talking about um, when they gave me contracts. Um, they, they told me, um, this, you know, we are friends, this is good for you, just read it and sign it and uh, everything will be fine. And there's quite a lot of money attached, money attached to it. And I had the idea that might be not everything that should be said about these contracts, uh, and um, um, I, I, I knew I had to do quite a lot of work to understand what this game was about. Not coming from a money background, but from, from a culture and teacher's background and academic background, I needed to, 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 to install a, a, a kind of a situation to make m me, myself, able to, to understand, to do the work. So I... Um, 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 decided um, to do this work to understand that um, uh, uh, just by um, um, explaining it to others. And all of a sudden um, I, I was in a, in a group of 20 composers who had the same problems like me because they were pros but they didn't understand what it was about um, money-wise, rights-wise. And uh, it turned, uh, turned out to be quite intense, um, um, 20 people, 40 people, 60 people, and we turned, to, uh, we turned out to, to become an association, a prof professional association of composers. And founded um, uh, a congress and a, f a festival and um, did international cu curating work. And um, so I ended up being in politics again, because uh, this is quite, quite close to what I came from. Um, because this is cultural work for me in a way, because it's so closely related to, to society, to my uh, idea of society, um, to my idea of, of democracy. And I think we have to fight for democracy right now, um, even if um, we might not be on the same side um, um, talking about copyright or author's rights, um, we, we have common problems. And um, from that angle, ankle, um, um, my perspective on the processes we have here in Brussels and in Strasbourg right now is um, quite dramatic. Um, you might know about the situation um, uh, in early July when the first um, uh, um, uh, European uh, Parliament day was um, and they had to decide on the uh, EU uh, regulation. They, uh, they had more than 60 million emails uh, during five days before that day, before uh, July 5th. And um, more than 80% of those um, emails uh, came from Canada and the, and, and the state of Washington. And we're talking about a European uh, regulation project. So, might be that someone spent quite a lot of money to interact with a uh, with a German uh, with the, with the European um, Parliament in a way that didn't make interaction possible. Um, in the year two thousand twelve, you might re remember that we we were talking about ACTA, 
And uh, one big German magazine um, um, framed this uh, this uh, phrase of governance by shitstorm, and this is what we had in July again: governance by shitstorm. And um, governance by, by shitstorm is driven by angst, by fear. And just remember the framing of this whole debate. You were right, we have to understand the debate. So, we are talking about censorship. Censorship? Really? Um, attached to copyright? How, how might that be possible? You, you might be the only one who read Article 13. Is anyone here who, who read Article 13? Two. Two people. Okay. Four. Um, um, uh, if, you, if you did so, um, you, you, you read that uh, it's not, not allowed to go into content itself. It's just allowed to find out if a, a license is attached to a file. This is uh, the opposite. It's, it's per, de per definition, it's the opposite of censorship. Because you can't censor uh, uh, something you don't know. Yeah, I know um, you, you're talking about infrastructure and imposing infra infrastructure, but um, at the same time we heard that the system of, um, of, of YouTube is clo coming close to fascism because you can't do anything about it right now. And if you read uh, a little bit further in Article uh, 13, you might have found that the users, the people who upload and, and use the content on, on, uh, on the platform, not the plat platform itself, should be entitled to uh, go to court in case um, uh, uh, of false positives, which means false detections. It, would, it might have been the first, the first ever situation to empower the users of YouTube to have any right against YouTube, because right now they don't have any right because it's it's a world of uh, community standards, community standards that aren't transparent, and that have been provided by a, a Silicon Valley-based um, um, uh, um, company um, from another rights system. So we might be in trouble because the framing doesn't allow to talk about the topics being at hand. Uh, would you let me finish? Thanks. Um, um, uh, and it's, it's not true. Um, you have to use it. Not me. I, use it. I, I don't use it. But, um, but um, uh, it's more than 60% of music usages in Europe right now that come, in, that come from YouTube. Hmm? You don't have a real option. You don't have a real option. I agree with you. You don't have a real option. Yeah. Yeah, um, it's it's uh, there is nothing else, and 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 we 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 have been talking about uh, uh, Article Eleven. I, I'm not very close to ele Article Eleven because I have quite a lot of problems with it. But um, but um, there is one argu argument that might not be valid um, against Article Eleven, and that's uh, the the fear that um, Google might close down Google News. Yeah, why not? So because in in that situation, finally. Finally, we might be, might be coming back to a situation of having a market. We don't have a market right now. We have ol uh, oligopolies. It's com a complete monopoly um, of, 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 of infrastructure. No one from us, no one here in, in this room has any chance to do anything against it if we don't do it here in Brussels by the uh, European legislation. So even if we are not fond of every single aspect in this, uh, in this regulation um, um, uh, framework, it might be important for us to, to be serious about everything connected to us. And, and we aren't. Seriously, we aren't. Because if we talk about censorship and link tax, I mean tax, yeah? Tax is, is, is money raised by states. But this is not money raised by states. It's private money we're talking about. So the framing it's absurd, it's not serious, and that ma makes, up, makes a, a real, a real tr uh, problem for us because we can't, um, we can't go into a dis dispute um, about things we don't understand. We don't have a common basis for it. And uh, I'm coming back to the, to the start. I I'm an author, and the, uh, you, you might not be aware of the situation of professional authors in music. 
um, especially songwriters. No one pays them. Who should pay a, a songwriter? Did you ever think think about that? Um, uh, yeah, it's 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 your risk. You, you write a song. Uh, it's your own risk, and you're completely uh, in a situation to be liable for every note because um, there is this this word plagiarism in in the program. I'm not interested in plagiarism because th th that's not our problem. But um, but um, but um, if, if if it were plagiarism, you might be in trouble because you are liable for everything you do. That's that's the dark side of of being an author, and. Um, um, Authors start earning money, start earning their lives when you start using the music. So um, who is the enemy you are fighting here when you are opposing copyright? It's not the big companies because they, they are coming along. It's me and my colleagues because we are the ones who, def who depend existentially on every single cent we might make out of Article 13, or of uh, European authors' rights. And um, we, we, we heard the word of um, uh, ideology quite a few times. Yeah, this is a, an a ideo ideological debate. And honestly, I hate neoliberalism uh, uh, neo and capitalism myself. And I'm the first one to go with you if we find a solution to change the system. But you can change the, the situation of one branch or, or one sector within society or within uh, uh, our, our, our uh, uh, um, democracy um, um, without giving them any chance to, 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 to earn a living. So, um, this is not a, a holistic approach we are talking about right now. If we, if we, w if we were interested in having an, a holistic approach, we needed to understand that as long as we are in capitalism, we need to pay authors. It's so simple, and it's not attached to the question of, of, uh, of, of authorship at all. It's uh, attached to the possibility of, um, of, of selling licenses and of being paid for usages. It's so simple, it's completely pragmatic. Everything else is not only um, ideological, uh, because it's academic as well, and I'm, I'm a studied uh, musicologist, I know the trouble uh, about authorship and the work, but um, there's still some, some problems um, just coming back to the things uh, having been, uh, been said before I entered the stage. Um, copyright has nothing to do with genius, nothing. Even if I have long hair, curly, and so, <laughs> yeah? Uh, it's, it's not attached because um, 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 you don't have, a, have to be a genius to create something. And, 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 and the moment of creation creates your right to be paid. It's so simple. And the, uh, the next thing, copyright and author's rights aren't attached at all to ideas. It's not about ideas, it's about works. And there's a major difference between an uh, idea and a work, because a work has to, be, has to be worked on. You can spread your ideas as you like. No one can do anything about, this, uh, about it. But you can spread my works. That's the difference. Yeah, and um, and um, another point um, that might be quite interesting um, and might, uh, might 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 be quite um, important is um, something we heard about about before: um, data protection, um, informational self um, determination. I forgot that word every time, um, because um, as I said before, we have. In continental Europe, we have a situation of an author's right, which is not the same thing like the copyright, because it's the author's right. And that means it's not about money in the first place. The fundament of the continental European author's right, author, author's right uh, is, is his, uh, the author's moral right. The moral right is the one reason I have to be the one to decides on the use of my works. Because um, the idea behind it, the concept behind it is uh, that um, if you 
do something with my work, it might be uh, a danger for me as a person because we are connected and this, this connection can't be, um, can't be um, um, erased. That might be an old idea, but, but uh, at the same time we're talking about data protection and um, data uh, informational self-determination. Self and uh, I, we, we are quite decided about it um, to, 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 um, to fight for it. So, um, we have a situation that we, we, we fought for um, data protection rules uh, uh, on the European level uh, about four or five years ago. And uh, right now everything um, uh, turned out to be, well, not so, not, not really uh, bright like this light here. Um, because um, obviously the same thing happened that right now is happening to copyright on the European level. Um, so many stakeholders, so much money, and it's not my money because I'm, I'm not a paid lobbyist. I lobby for myself and for my colleagues. Yeah? But, um, but Google um, is said to, to have spent um, uh, 36 million on lobbying against uh, the copyright directive. Um, so um, uh, m many stakeholders, many interests, um, and uh, we won't have, we won't have um, a solution that fits every idea behind it. It won't, it won't be a solution that's perfect like in data protection. But at the same time, there's um, this paper attached to the law, to the, re to the, to the, to the, to the legislation. And um, in this paper is written why this legislation was laid down. And from now on, the courts will be able to read the legisla le legislation itself and um, the reasons we gave, we, we laid down for it. And um, we will have four or five years of court right, as we say in German, um, Richterrecht, uh, which is not fun to have. But we will be able to find a way to cope with it. It's so simple, because we can't do big steps with, uh, with, with our feet um, um, bound together by big money. When, when big money com comes from big tech, so we have to do the, the, the smaller steps to get rid of those problems. So I hope um, you, you got an idea of my, of, of, of my idea of a holistic approach and I, I'm really completely serious. Um, even if we don't get my concept of, of copyright, of author's right on a European level, first of all, the courts will do it. They are doing it right, right now and they, do it, uh, they are doing it quite harshly. harshly. Um, second, um, it's not... It's not um, the one problem that should be the biggest problem we, we, we discuss right now. We are in big trouble um, um, uh, concerning the future of the European Union and um, concerning um, democracy at, uh, um, um, as our basic um, principles, of our, as, as our fundamentals, and we have to be aware of the forces um, dealing with our ideas of identity and those forces, and this is um, the dark ground we are being on in this uh, discussion, those forces are in the hands of Silicon Valley monopolies. Because um, public opinion in Europe is being bred by Google and Facebook. So we should be aware of the, of, of the fact who is our enemy. Thanks.